Welcome to Just Another Art. Now there's nothing quite like the sense of a discovery when we're visiting a foreign city. I love uncovering antiques and unusual paintings, especially in a town as exciting as London. I recently had a fantastic romp amongst the treasures on offer at the Olympia Fine Art and Antique Fair, held twice a year in London. In fact, if you're heading over soon, there'll be another fair in November. I hope you enjoy this glimpse into the world of antiques, fine arts and collectibles. When in London on the hunt for antiques, one often heads to the most obvious spots, but there is a great deal more if you scratch below the surface. Two of my favourites are the Olympia Antique Fair, where you'll find the best of the best, and if you like getting off the beaten track, head over to Church Street in Marlebone. The Olympia Antique Fair is held in summer each year in London, and is now in its 40th year. This year, more than 32,000 collectors passed through the doors to visit 200 dealers who saved some of their best works for this event. There's something for all budgets with pieces on offer from £100 right through to a beautiful little Picasso I spotted for £1.5 million. Even though I was shopping for clients, I managed to find myself a rather grotesque carved lion's head balustrade terminal. Now what on earth am I going to do with that? I really enjoy the fact that Olympia is so eclectic. There's just so many unusual pieces here from across the antique spectrum. There's Miolica, there's silver, there's 19th and 18th century furniture, there's objects galore, over 200 dealers. And one of the most interesting things about Olympia is that no matter where you turn, you find something you really just don't expect to see. In fact, I've just come across John Hawkins, who of course is one of Australia's most preeminent antique dealers, and he's based out of Tasmania. He has a 19th century elephant skeleton on his stand. Now, I wasn't expecting to see that. While I was at the Olympia Antique Fair, I came across my old colleague from Sotheby's, Sarah Colgrave, who is an expert in 19th century British pictures. She and I had a chat about her favourite painting, an exquisite Victorian interior scene by Jessica Haler. The detail is immaculate. I think these sort of these four Victorian ladies were in this house just looking at what the things that have surrounded them. Rather aesthetic interiors, this lovely little bamboo furniture, picking out that little silver teapot. It becomes a social document, really, of an interior at the time. Oh, completely. And also there's such a Victorian sentiment to it. Could you tell me Absolutely. a little bit about what's going on in the painting? Well, the title of the picture is When We First Met, and it's obviously this poor little boy is overcome with embarrassment by being introduced to this rather glamorous young girl. And she looks rather <laughs> self-confident, doesn't she, well, in she contrast? Does. I think she might be a little bit shocked by his reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah had this wonderful work on offer for £34,000, which I believe she sold later that day. Portobello Road is a favourite haunt for fashionistas, collectors and market lovers, but let's face it, it's well and truly on the tourist trail. If you find the crowds in Portobello Road a bit much to take, you should actually head up to Marlebone and to Church Street, and specifically come to Alfie's. I love it. There's about 75 shops under the one roof, and they've been here for about 35 years. There's everything, magnificent Italian glass, as you see around you here. And there's some vintage, and there's some beautiful silver, old master paintings, you name it, it's here. It's a really fun street. And also there's a lot of antique dealers running all the way down Church Street, selling an extraordinary array of material. It's a very different vibe to Portobello Road, and it's a very different vibe to uh, Kensington Church Street, both in Notting Hill, but it's really worth a visit. Church Street has one of the largest concentrations of dealers left in London. You have a remarkable array of shops, cheek by jowl with laundrettes and Indian restaurants, giving the area a great atmosphere. All in all, it was a really successful visit. While I was there this year, I found some really unusual objects for several of my clients, including three pieces of 18th century furniture and a rather remarkable Impressionist painting. So, it's really worthwhile getting off the tourist track when in London, and Marlebone and Olympia are two great places to start.